Hey, this is Valentina Angelova for Computer Science 480, assignment number two. I'm going to begin by running my code through the three examples that we were provided. Um, so as you can see, my program asks for the file name, and then outputs the sequence of moves, whether we won, um, time taken, and number of moves total. So this was for the easy one. Let's run it on the medium. This one, I came back with 13 moves. Max wins again. And this one, I came back again with a win, but this time it took 41 moves for the 10-move um, game. I have a simple driver that simply takes in the path of a file, um, and then I read through the file and initialize the number of moves available, number of moves taken, um, the sequence of moves so far. Then I initialize a dance battle um, object. So in the dance battle I modeled um, my states as a two-dimensional um, boolean array. So that's this right here. Um, basically, every move is uh, true for being available, and then once it's been taken, I change that to false. I also make sure to change the inverse. So here you can see when I'm initializing based on uh, what was given in the file. I make sure to mark false at first and second index as well as the inverse. For the min-max algorithm, I was a grad student, so I had to implement the heuristic and um, the alpha beta pruning. And this all begins in the get solution uh, method. So in here, while we're not at a terminal node, so that means that we have not reached um, an end state where there are no more moves left, then I go ahead and get the next move. Um, I start with a depth of 1 and increase that until I um, get to a terminal state. So here in the minimax alpha beta algorithm is implemented. So my first check is to make sure um, if it's a terminal state or if I've reached a depth of zero, um, then I return the utility and I'm gonna go over that um, in a moment. But otherwise I use a Boolean to represent whether or not it's max's turn. Um, if it is, then we set a v to be the min value, and then here, if it's min turn, then that's the max value. Then I get the list of successors, and then I loop through all the um, child nodes in the successors. And for max, I calculate the max, um, calling min max alpha beta recursively, um, and decreasing the depth. And obviously, this stops once I get to a depth of zero up here. Um, I calculate alpha again by reevaluating the utility that I found um, compared to the one that we initialize here. And then um, this is the alpha beta pruning. If beta is less than equal to alpha, then I stop searching the child node for um, the path that we're on uh, since we're not going to find a more optimal node. And then my utility function. So if we're in a terminal state and it is max's move, or max was the last to make a move, then we return positive infinity because that's max's winning state. Otherwise, um, if it's a terminal state and it was min's last move, then min won and we return negative infinity. Um, if we're not at a terminal state, then what I'm doing is checking for the number of moves that are remaining and in this function, I basically loop through the state board, find every um, move that's um, still marked true or available, and I also make sure to eliminate duplicates. Um, once we get that number, um, here we check if the number of move le moves left is odd and max just had a turn then that means that uh, min has an advantage, so I return that as a negative number. Um, or if the number of moves uh, is even, 
and men just had a turn, it means that in our worst case scenario, um, men would be the last one to make the move, so um, max would lose, so again, return a negative for our heuristic. Um, the opposite case would be um, for max, and for those, I return a positive number. Thank you.